Hello guys and welcome back to Persona 3 Reload. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and opened up the new uh, student council social link. And in this episode, we're going to continue hanging out with Tomochika here because there actually is a social link that we can unlock from hanging out with him a couple of times. You're free, right? Let's hang out. I kind of give all of the male social links the same like deep sort of guy voice like, Hey, how's it going, man? Anyways, I, I actually haven't even talked to you since we first met a couple, di like a week ago, so... Yo. Yeah, let's hang out. Hey, sup, dude? I'm gonna head out soon. How about you? Huh? You coming with? Then how about we go for ramen again? I want to hear more about you, too. Man, this always hits the spot. This flavor's pretty addictive, huh? Despite its simple appearance, the soup has a complex flavor that is, that is enhanced by the noodles. By the way, dude, why the hell is your dorm co-ed? Can you, like, just waltz on into Takeba-san's room and stuff? The best option here is to say, no way. Yeah, that's what I thought. Can't win them all, I suppose. Well, I'm not interested in girls her age anyway. I'm more into older women. How about you? Uh, the best option is to say, I'm into older women, too. No way! Really? Not a lot of guys out there who feel the same way. Man, you're cooler than I thought. To tell you the truth, this stays between us. I have my eye on someone. This is the secret plan I was talking about. Basically, I'm just gonna ask this girl out. But get this. She's a teacher at our school. Not like that's gonna stop me from making my move. But you gotta promise you won't tell anyone, okay? It might look weird if a teacher and a student are having a thing, you know? Tomachika told me a secret plan. I feel like our relationship is stronger. Yeah, that's kind of what this social link is gonna be about. Tomachika is just really into this teacher, and yeah, it sucks. Oh crap! My favorite show is about to start. See ya. Welcome back. The internet line, which was ripped apart by the shadow earlier this month, will be fixed tomorrow. If you have a computer in your room, you should be able to connect. So that takes care of everything that was damaged. Except, of course, Akihiko's ribcage. <laughs> Speaking of the internet, you play any online games, dude? Uh, online games? You know, those games you play online with a bunch of people you never met before? I used to be totally addicted to this one game, but I kind of got burned out on it. Uh, here, you could have it. It's called Innocent Sin Online. The reason this is funny is because the first game of the Persona 2 duology is, of course, called Persona 2 Innocent Sin. And this is not where the Mega Ten references stop. There will be tons of stuff that will be brought up, so be prepared for that. Pretty cool, huh? When we get around to playing Innocent Sin Online, I'll try to bring up as many references as possible. Uh, but if there's something I missed, be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll bring it up in the next episode. Oh. Tons of people all playing the same game together. And it's online, right? I imagine that makes it even harder to know who you're playing. I guess not knowing your enemies makes it easier in some respects. As for me, I prefer to look my opponent straight in the face before we compete. Hello. How are your explorations of Tartarus proceeding? Really good. Fantastic. Excellent. Then continue the good work. Hmm. Online games. Well, some casual recreation is fine, but try not to get carried away. It, if it should devolve into an unhealthy obsession, need I say the rest? Oh, yeah. I'm so glad that we could start using the internet again. You've been meaning to che I've been meaning to check out the new summer clothes that are coming out now. I guess I should look at the magazines, but it's quicker to just check out, check online. Plus, it's free. Oh yeah. I hear a lot of gamers love Innocent Sin Online. Well, since tomorrow's a holiday, you should play it, dude. Yes, Atlas. People do love Innocent Sin. Re-release it, please. Anyways, uh, Polonia Mall is not the only place we can raise social stats. We've kind of shown off everything that we could do over there at the moment. 
Uh, but over at Iwatodai Strip Mall, there are even more restaurants that we can check out. Uh, the first one that I want to bring up, first of all, do you have dialogue? Perfectly healthy person becoming mentally ill overnight. There's no family history of it, and they haven't been in any terrible accidents. There wasn't even any similarity to the last victims. It was a different time in a different place. This is one tough mystery, you know? But I'm gonna solve it. I will solve it. Good luck to you. It's kind of inherently supernatural, so... You've got a tough line of work ahead of you. Anyway, let's check out Wakatsu Kitchen. It's too crowded right now. Never mind. Let's go to Hagakure. Ramen 900 yen. Improve my charm. Let's check it out. Frequent customer seems to have enough enough courage to order a special Hagakure bowl from the burly owner. Looks like part of a special menu only available on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday nights. Maybe I could order if my courage was at least determined. I were to show you ramen with pork. Thanks to the plump pork belly, my skin feels more supple. Nice. So we're just kind of doing all charm stuff. I'm just trying to show off everything and we're accidentally going that way. Because I'm pretty sure charm is the easiest thing to level up. Today is show a day. There's no school. Come to think of it, I should be able to connect to the internet now. I could try playing the game that Junpei gave me. Alrighty, so indeed, as you can see here, there's a new social link to be unlocked. Studying in your room. Studying at your desk takes some time, but academics will increase. So we're not going to be doing that. We will be playing the online game, though. Play the MMORPG. I think I'll spend the day playing online. Okay, first of all, uh, Innocent Sin Online, the logo for that, I'm pretty sure is a reference to Soul Hackers. Uh, right here, Autumn, the year 1990X, is a reference to... So Autumn it would be slightly after Persona 2 Innocent Sin took place, because that took place in August of 1999. I have one new message. From Phil. Phil is a, char is a reference to Philemon from the original trilogy. He was basically kind of what Igor is in the modern trilogy, where he gave you your personas... And he's sort of like a guide that you frequently check in with. And he's represented by a butterfly that you see throughout the entire series. So, if, if any of you have played uh, Persona 4 and Persona 5, you know that you've definitely seen butterflies in those games. I'm pretty sure those have all been Philemon. Okay, so I have to give Philemon a voice. Uh, Philemon has, does have a canonical voice actor. In the PSP re-release, he has this, like, smooth, sort of, deep voice. And then in the original PS1 version, it's just kind of like, Welcome! I'll see if I can, I'll see if I can get a clip of that. Welcome. My name is Philemon. I live between the world of consciousness and unconsciousness. So tell me, who are you? Reality is just a series of events and players acting out what they believe to be true. When we accept the f that fact, our world becomes as real as any other. Reality is off- is- reality is but a reflection of our own thoughts and expectations. But, what if we were to merely- but what if we were merely reflections in someone else's mirror? Are you prepared to look through that mirror to discover the truth? That screenshot is definitely a reference to some Mega Ten game. I'm not sure what. I don't see any other players. A girl in red approaches me. Sup, XD. So that character model I think is a reference to the main protagonist of the first Shin Megami Tensei game. Uh, also, she speaks entirely in, like, mid to late 2000s internet speak, so I'm not entirely sure how I'll be pronouncing this stuff, because some of this only really works in text form. ASL. Oh wait, are you a noob? You are, huh? Oh wow, you haven't even finished making your character yet. I uh, guess that new default skin was, was for real. I got this cool outfit in the patch, too. 
Not like it brought in many new people. This is kind of a dead MMO these days. Eh, welcome to the game. Cool to see you around. Uh, who are you? Sorry, I got kind of out of character there. We're supposed to be our alternate selves, right? Uh, yeah. No, what are you gonna call your character? All I see is no data. Hey, I got a good name for you. How about Tatsuya? Yeah, that's perfect IMO. Tatsuya is the name of the protagonist from Persona 2 Innocent Sin, and he's a major character in the sequel Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. I'll change mine to Maya, okay? Maya is referenced is in reference to Maya Amino from again Persona 2 in and she was a major character in Persona 2 Innocent Sin and the protagonist of Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. Have a little deja vu? Heh, <laughs> that's clever. Oh really? I'm impressed. I didn't think many people played that. Well, if you see any jokers, be sure to rescue me, okay? Uh, for all of you Persona 5 fans, Persona 5 is not the first uh, game to have a major character called Joker. This is a reference to Joker from Persona 2. Um, he's the sort of, like, deity character. Sort of like the main villain of the duology, in a way. I don't want to get into too many spoilers, uh, but anyways, moving on. Anyway, I'm off idling here on my days off, so if you're bored, maybe we can level together. It sucks to be lonely. I've become acquainted with a player who goes by the name Maya. Maya's also a funny name because I just got finished doing a let's play of a game with a major character named Maya. Thou art I. Thou hast established a new bond. Thou shalt have our blessing when thou choosest to create a persona of the Hermit Arcana. Yeah, the Hermit Arcana makes sense here. Sorry, gotta go. Remember, think positive. Trace Doe. I think that's also a reference to Persona 2. It's been a while since I played in since then. I got... I forget if I either beat that game or if I got like super far in it. If I didn't beat it, I got to like one of the last dungeons. And then I haven't played Eternal Punishment yet, so... I'll get around to finishing it eventually. Yo, what's up? Oh yeah, you can use that computer over there whenever you want, by the way. You can put whatever software you want onto it, too. Oh, but don't play online games on it. It'd suck if someone else accidentally used your account. So yeah, uh, this will... This is, uh... So, the shared computer. Use these for, uh, CDs and stuff like that from the Manga Star Net Cafe. Which we'll go ahead and visit in just a sec. Man, no one's back yet. We have school tomorrow. I guess that means Tartarus is a no-go? Yep, that's right. Nice. Alrighty then, time to hit the hay. Hmm. Just, well, let's just chill for tonight if we can't go to Tartarus. I think... I'm pretty sure this is the line where if you say, no, we're going, he makes a Brokeback Mountain reference. Which reminds me, uh, for those of you who want a more comedic Let's Play of uh, Persona 3 Reload, the voice actor for Makoto Yuki, Alex Lee, he he's doing a let's play of the game. He has two vid two edited videos up on his uh, channel at the moment, so I'll link those in, de in the description. Anyways, if we head over to the strip mall and we go to the third floor, we get to the net cafe. Welcome. The software programs on our computers are available for sale at the counter. So, in this, we can buy various uh, bits of software for the computers, and they will do various things like raise our social stats or give us special abilities in Tartarus. Um, I can't buy all of these because I'll just buy one for now. Like. I'm already up on charm, so let's see if we can get one. Yeah, let's try type and ghoul to see if we could get our courage up. Once we start making more money, I'll be able to buy all of the different CDs there, so... So we'll probably eventually see all of those. Looks like there's some pre-installed programs. A package on the bookshelf has a sticker that says free to borrow. Ah, I, I probably should, should have just done the digital cram school. You know, in fact, let's do that right now. 
Digital Cram School. It seems to be a set of practice questions from a famous school in the mountains. Whether you're brilliant or average, your journey here begins by answering questions all the same. I should try some questions in the areas I'm studying right now. I finished answering a challenging yet satisfying set of questions. I feel like I've gotten better at thinking outside the box. Rank up, maybe? No, okay, I probably should have expected that because we haven't really done any uh, knowledge or academic boosting activities and academics is the hardest one to level up. I can hear people talking. I spent my entire day off at the Net Cafe. You can play computer games there, so I ended up trying a bunch of different ones. Seriously? I knew they sell computer software there, but I didn't realize you could use them in the private booths too. It's always so packed there though, I never feel like going. Yeah, I was super crowded yesterday too, it's a miracle I managed to get my own booth. Next time I'll just buy the game, it's probably more relaxing to play it at home anyway. First bell has rung. Mr. Edogawa, okay, I was going to introduce a bit here I mentioned previously. So this guy, he is very infamous for going on and on and on and on for way too long. Most of these lectures from the other teachers last like maybe 30 seconds. This guy will go on for multiple minutes at a time, and it's the most boring stuff in the world. And so during my personal playthroughs, because like, I didn't think it would really matter. I decided to just skip past this stuff, but because I want to show off a bunch of stuff here, I decided to make a fun sort of game out of this. I'll be reading through all of his uh, lectures, and I'm going to set a timer, and I'm going to see, I want to see, like, his record for, like, how long he'll go in one lecture. So I'll just read this with my normal voice, and, because I don't want to have my voice influence how, flat, how fast or slow he talks. So let's begin. I'm Edogawa, and I'll be teaching, oh, let's call it integrative learning, ee <laughs> My goal is to ease some of the stress you suffer as students, of which I assume there's plenty. Think of it as psychotherapy through magic. Yes, that's right. Quiet down. No talking. Silence, I say. Were you surprised to hear me bring magic up? Well, the study was very recently published, so it's not well known just yet. But those who believe will be saved. In other words, the placebo effect is hard at work. That means believe your studies are paying off and eventually they will. Eehehe. <laughs> Alright then, let's get on with our first lecture, the basics of magic. Who can use magic and who cannot? That seems like a reasonable enough starting point. Some of you may think magic lets you do absolutely anything. Pulling pranks, raining vengeance on your enemies. Well, if those are the first wishes that run through your mind when it comes to magic, then I'll tell you now, you'll never master the craft. This is true of both Eastern and Western sorcery. Those with wicked hearts will, I will be either powerless or driven to ruin. There's one more vital facet to learning magic, and that is the master. Practitioners should always aspire to become as knowledgeable as their pre predecessors, especially if they intend to study high-level magic. But without a master's careful instruction, learning the craft becomes wholly impossible. Once you've begun your training, you'll have to, to live in two worlds at once, the real world and the dark realm. If you ever lose the ability to distinguish between the two, then you'll be headed straight for disaster. That's what makes the guidance of a master absolutely vital. With all of that out of the way, I'll move on to the meditation, one of the standards in magical training. Now, I've got some handouts for you, here for you. I'm feeling sleepy. Should I close my eyes for a few minutes? No, let's stay awake. Well, then. well, it looks like that's our time. If you think you might be interested in the practice, try meditating on the course of your day while lying in bed tonight. In vivid detail, recall each event taking place in reverse, sort of like traveling back through time in your mind. If you ever reach the point where you can do it flawlessly, you may just have what it takes to become a good magician. Eehehe. <laughs> Alright, that's it for today. I forced myself to stay awake and listen to the lecture. I have no idea how long that was, but I'll add it to what I'll call the Edogawa leaderboard and see if, uh, and we'll see which one of his lectures is the longest. Anyways, now that we've sat through that, uh, in the next episode, we're gonna go ahead and continue on with our social links and head into the month of May, our second month here, uh, which is interesting because this is a really short month since we skipped past half of it, but we're still like 12 episodes in. So yeah, this Let's Play is gonna be a long one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.